How many of you have ever been to a Lesbians Who Tech and Allies event? All right. All right, so we start every event off, and we're gonna do it here, with a high five. So turn to your neighbor, give him a high five. Warm him up. We've been sitting for a long time. Move that blood, it's so, so cold in here. Um, see, it's interesting. I think the lesbians and queer women actually do love the high fives more <laughs> than a, just, I just, observation. Um, well, Alan said way more of my bio, so I'm gonna just maybe tell some of the story. So when I walked in here tonight, I realized that I had not been in this hotel since we lost no on Prop 8, which was, I, I, even the bathroom, when I walked up, I was like, oh my God, I remember being with, I actually think we were dating at the time, but I remember with <laughs> coworker, um, crying, and it's, it's just, I can't believe it's been 15 years since we lost no on Prop 8. Just, um, wow, also getting old, but that's another topic. <sighs> So I started uh, at Equality California right after grad school. I was in my mid-20s, and I actually interviewed for a lot of LGBTQ jobs. And I had a flight booked to Panama to go surf and teach English. And I was on my last interview, and I parked at Equality California, and I was running late, and I did not feed the meter. I ended up getting two parking tickets that day, and I got the interview, or I got the job on the spot. And it changed my life forever. I ended up just managing the data there. And I learned so much. And one of the things that happened, you know, walking around the Castro District of San Francisco as someone who grew up very, in a very conservative, a very religious family, I was sort of newly getting comfortable with my sexuality. And I looked around and I just wondered, where were the women? Where were they? We were in the Castro. Where were the women? And this was before, obviously, non-binary was as much in our vernacular and, and a part of all the, everything that was going on. But I just really didn't understand as someone who was younger and looking for role models. And we'd have these dinners and, you know, and thank God for Kara Swisher and Megan Smith. And even though they're still divorced, it's, you know, I mean, but they were the only role models that I had. I mean, literally every event that we went to, we really struggled to get women to show up Right? And, and I managed all the data um, and looked at all the money. And, you know, we'd go, hey, John, it's time to give, you know, we gotta make sure we keep marriage. And he's, well, how much did Doug give? And I'm like, 10. He's like, I'll double it. And we never hear from D John or Doug again. And then we'd call, you know, one of the queer women, even sort of early employee at Google, and she would say, well, how much is going to the work? I don't know, I would like to donate my time. And I started tracking, because I'm a little bit of a data geek, how much time and energy it would take to get the donation from the woman versus the man. And I kept thinking about power in that, in that moment as a younger person and thinking, well, men make more than women, and when you put two women together versus two gay men, we're actually at the opposite ends of the economic spectrum. And the most valuable lesson that I learned there is economic power is actually our civic duty. And in these conversations, there would be so much discomfort around money and power, specifically with the women. And I just, I realized in that moment that my journey had to be around helping women and non-binary leaders, and specifically women of color and queer women, make more money. Because we were never gonna be able to live in the world that we wanted to live in, in a world where one day there's a black lesbian president, if we don't make more money to create that world, right? The other second lesson I learned there is that there's only two ways you can show up in this world. And that's with your time and with your money. And your money is a lot more scalable, right? And so that's part of this journey. And so I left Equality California and I started my own company and I entered into Silicon Valley. And it turns out there were also a lot of white cis men there. <laughs> and I started thinking, 
this is fascinating. And I would go to the women events, right, which were there many, and they're all talking about Lean In, Sheryl Sandberg, which is amazing. And there'd be panels and they would talk about, you know, what about the husband at home? You know, we gotta make sure that he's doing his fair share with the kids, and, and obviously all of that is true for the record. But it's just in those moments where things are 10% different, right? What if you have two women at home, right? Totally different conversation that was not happening. And at the same time in Silicon Valley, you know, about 10 years ago, there was this conversation starting to happen around diversity, right? Where are all the women engineers? There were leaders who were literally going to the about pages and tracking the men versus women that were on the teams. And for the first time, leaders like Kara Swisher pushing the story in the press. And all of a sudden, I'm sure many companies in this room sort of you know, realized that there was this energy, and not, it's not that they didn't know that there needed to be more representation. We've had the studies that representation is better for the business line, better for the bottom line for a long time. But that pressure, right, that urgency, and in that moment, I thought, as a new entrepreneur, you know, maybe we could get more women to show up to these LGBTQ events if we just centered them, if we created value that was more specific to them. And to be honest, I really thought it would fail because I tried so hard to get more women to come to our events and our fundraisers and all the things. And they're like, I was like, all right, I guess we just want to stay home watching Scandal and drink wine, and that's fine too. <laughs> I really, I really truly was stubborn and just wanted to be proven right and then move on with my life to something else because I honestly was sort of like, I never want to be a professional gay again, um, which is funny standing up here now in this moment, right? But I thought if we could build this specifically for us, be intentional without being exclusionary, what if we could build something that was more specific to us? What if we could create more economic power? Because obviously technology is a way to do that. Right? Tech jobs pay three times the average American salary. So if we can use that and actually create more economic power and then something crazy happened, they just started showing up. We would have these events and there would be lines out the door and I was like, where were you during Prop 8? And they're like, well, and they're like, okay. Like I see, and they would come and they would see it and Austin would call and New York would call. And I was like, okay, maybe we have something. And so we ran another experiment. We had our first ever summit in the Castro Theater in 2014. <clears throat> Kara Swisher and Megan Smith were the first people to open that door at 7 a.m. They were like, what is this? They were like, I am the only lesbian in tech. I was like, well, we're gonna find out today if anyone shows up. And here we are, 10 years later, we have 100,000 members in over 40 cities. We've hosted events at the White House. We just hosted a dinner at the Vice President's house. We've had Megan Smith as the Chief, Chief Technology Officer. So something I've been thinking a lot about that I just wanted to share with you is how do we make sure that this continues on, right, into the next 10 years? Because if I stopped doing this work tomorrow, it would not, my opinion, is that it would not continue, right? How do we make sure that there is more than just lesbians to and allies that is specific to LGBTQ women and non-binary leaders, right? And it's not, actually one of the things that really frustrated me when I was younger in, at Equality California is I was like, there's so many groups, right? It, it just seemed like it was so fractional. And I didn't realize then about power that we had to be specific to actually have a voice. And that it, it is absolutely a both end approach. Right? We can come together in these moments and be together, but then also have specific things. And so one of the things that we struggle with, so our revenue model is actually recruiting and retention, professional development, right? We don't do a lot of fundraising. We provide value to companies. Tech is everywhere, so it's every type of business. And we get sent 100% of the time to the LGBTQ side of the business. Companies don't even see us as women or women of color, I mean, literally in 10 years, 100% of the time, the first few years, they'd be like, Leanne, I really want to support, but we're just focused on hiring more women in tech. And I would pause, and I was like, this is going to be slightly awkward. But lesbians are, in fact, women.
and non-binary. Lesbians are non-binary now, too. But it still happens 10 years later. We struggle to be seen as women. We get put in the LGBTQ box. And it's not that we aren't intersectional, but we want to be a part of, pay, of solving pay equity for women, women of color, and non-binary leaders within corporate structures. We want to make sure there's representation at every level in corporate America. We want more women, women of color CEOs, right? And there's actually no way for us to do that if we don't have more LGBTQ men as our allies. We need you so badly. Like I said earlier, men make more money than women, and there's two of you. And this is changing, which is amazing, but you know, usually it's double income, no dependents. And you all have a lot of economic power. And we need you, we truly do. And we can do so much more if we work together. And I'm just more specifically talking in the corporate worlds. Because the way it's set up isn't always designed for success. We're, we often have to choose our identity. And that's, we should do better, and we will. But for the now, in sort of the paradigm that is set up, we really do need you. And I would love to talk to all of you. And I believe that if we can figure this out together, that we're going to see even more representation in corporate America. So thank you so much for this. This is amazing.